Hey everybody, welcome back to Kill by Daylight. This is my first video, well, one in the new year, so uh, happy new year. I hope you're having a good, this is going up on like Wednesday because they swerved me. We'll get into that in a minute, but uh, it's going up on Wednesday the 5th, recording this the 3rd. Uh, I hope you're having a good first five days of the new year, I guess. Um, haven't been posting videos on this channel. Uh, last one was the ring thing, and that was like... Weeks ago, it feels like. Months, maybe. Years, decades ago, at this point. Might as well be with how YouTube's algorithm works. Uh, TLDR is I lost the footage for episode 2 of Becoming a Legion main, and it's like, ah, uh, God. Not only is Legion garbage and needs a massive rework or even just a massive buff not just an uh, add-on pass but um I just like I'm not having fun with the game and like if I'm not having fun with the game I don't want to record it so I know it's just gonna be a frustrating mess uh and that'll tie into something later on we'll talk about I have no idea how long this is gonna be but this is gonna be a two split into two different sections um because as you can see up here it's part one uh, this was posted about, yeah, 12 hours ago. Uh, I'm recording this at 11 o'clock at night because real boy gaming hours. Uh, when I clicked on this, I'm pretty sure part one wasn't here. Um, but you can see, check back tomorrow. Part D. So, this will be separated into like two parts. Part one is now, part two will be the second half of the video. Maybe the last half or more than half because I don't know what's in it. Uh, so, uh, this one, uh, we're talking about a lot about, a, about the future. In fact, there's six topics they talk about, three of which are about future things that are planned for later updates. Yeah, um, if, if I don't sound excited, uh, it's because I'm not. It's because I'm not really about this update. This one, part one in particular, maybe my tune changes with... Part two, because maybe it'll, hey, it'll be about things that are in the next mid-chapter. Uh, which I'm assuming tomorrow is also the PTB. Or, I guess, yesterday is the PTB. Time is a c weird thing. Uh, some say a construct. Um, but I'm just like, there's a lot of classic behavior stuff in here. It's a lot of tell, don't show. Like, hey, we're working on this. Wouldn't you like to know what it is? It's like, yes! Give me something to be excited about. God damn it. Uh, you guys make it so hard to like your game, one, and two, to like you as a developer because of this shenanigans. Anyway, um, I'm gonna TLDR, TLDR a lot of this. Uh, patch optimization plans, that's for the future. Uh, TLDR, they're looking to make patch times faster. Not, fa not patch times, but, uh, Time to download a patch faster, so uh, say say like uh uh ba -ba -da -ba -da -da. why does it take so long? Keeps on this game is split up into small chunks. This is when the game updates. This is this way when the game updates, you only need to download the chunks that change rather than the whole game. That's probably why there's a lot of bugs. Not gonna lie, like when Call of Duty down, you need to call it download a, a Call of Duty update. You're basically downloading the whole game again. Like, if I need to download an update for, say, Halo Infinite, for that multiplayer, uh, it's you're basically downloading the entire game again. Some games it's not a problem. Halo Infinite is 17 gigabytes, so it's gonna be like a, a 15 to 17 gig, maybe 20 gig, depending on how much stuff is in the patch. Call of Duty, uh, it's a 115 gigabyte game, so that download's gonna take about 15 years to download. That's why Call, Call of Duty sucks. That's one of the many reasons, Bobby Kotick. Uh, is the devil. Just gotta put that out in there in the new year. Um, uh, trouble is, as the game has grown over the years, so have these chunks, so patches get bigger. And patch times get longer. Uh, they're looking to, like, speed this shit up by about 200%. So that's fast. Like, they're even re uh, reducing the required disk space for Steam to, uh, to by about 18 gigabytes. I don't know how big it is on Steam, but 18 gigabytes seems like a lot. 
I don't know. Uh, important both these cases, the uh, improvements were required to download it, re-download the game completely. Uh, yeah. You do that for the first time when they optimize it, and then updates will go back to being much smaller. Woo! Uh, foresight, foreshadowing, this is behavior, so more than likely, uh, they're restructuring these chunks in the future, but more likely, one of these re restructured chunks will be, uh, instead of a 1, it'll be a 0, and that'll just make everything 2,000 times slower to download. Like, I'm not gonna be shocked when this patch gets released, it's like, what the fuck is it, 200 gigabytes? What, did you re- did you remaster everything in the new Unreal Engine? What the hell, why is it taking so long? It's behavior. Less stupid things have happened. Just saying. Uh, matchmaking optimization plans, uh, TLDR, SBMM. We worked on it for, like, three years, um, and we put it in even though we knew it wasn't gonna work. It was basically the same- worse than the old system, but fuck you. You don't tell us what to do, uh... That's the long and short of it. They- they even say, like, yeah, it may be polarizing. Bruh? When 98% of your community hates it, it's not polarizing. It is- it is demonized. Okay. Uh, th this is also a line of shit, by the way. Though it may be polarizing, we want to be tra as transparent as possible when it comes to SBMM. If that were true, you would show us what our MMR is. Just fucking straight up. You'd- you'd load onto this screen, and your- your name would be here, and be like, 1550 MMR. If you really want to be transparent about it, you would, one, tell us how it works, tell us how to get more, how to lose, uh, MMR, and what our MMR actually is with each killer and as a survivor. But you're- you don't want to be a trans- as transparent as possible. You hate talking to us. For some reason, I don't know why. I know I'm bitching at you incessantly, but I'm making very valid points. Um... But basically, they're gonna be making improvements in the future. Again, I'm thinking these future improvements will be... the next chapter, the ring chapter, or maybe even, like, bigger stuff like matchmaking optimization. Uh, I hate to say it, probably, uh, year six anniversary when we get Jason Voorhees. Or Springtrap, or hell, maybe both. That would make me a very happy camper. Uh, and would make some specific, uh, Fortnite fanboys online very sad. We won't get into that, though. Um, beyond small tweaks, we've identified some areas that could be improved. Backfill improvement, basically, it doesn't fucking work. Uh, when somebody leaves the lobby, right now it heavily favors a quick replacement over a quality one, meaning you're gonna get those mismatches. You're gonna get somebody either who has played Five hours or a thousand hours, and it's the game is just like, suck it, fucking figure it out, homie. Uh, disconnection. When you disconnect, you'll probably lose MMR. Who cares? Um, uh, there's something else in here I want to talk about for the big one. Um, uh, but 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 Okay, I I'm misremembering that. I thought it was like something about. Uh, lead to some matches where one or more players are outside of their uh, skill range. I mean, that's that's normal for this system. I've seen a lot of people just be like, I have 5,000 hours in this game. Why am I playing against somebody who has two? What? Um, the one I'm excited about, there's, there's a couple things in this I'm excited about. Okay, I'll be, I'll be upfront, I'll be honest, I'm gonna take a sip of water just to be transparent. Will you see how it's done behavior? Ah, that was good. Aqua. Agua. H2O, hydrogen to oxygen, particles, fucked and gave me that water from my sink. Tap. You know it. Extended break, what am I on about? Uh, extended break, so. Uh, this thing I'm excited for because I'm known to have, have a very on, off, on again, off again relationship with this game, as a lot of people do, because it's fucking frustrating. Just is. I laugh when, like, people who've been playing this game for five fucking years are like, Survivor isn't busted. Killer isn't underpowered. It's like, Ot. Come on, man. Like, I, I, didn't, I haven't watched his newest video yet, but I'm, I just gleaned off, like, the title card and the title of, like, You've been, you're a killer main who's been playing Trapper for a century now. 
course you're gonna be good at the game and make it look easy. You're not normal, you're God. <laughs> like, come on, man. Um, but when someone, I feel like they're pointing at me when they say this, uh, takes an extended break from the game, their rating does not change. This isn't ideal since you're bound to be a little rusty after you're uh, not playing for a while and returning to difficult matches is a recipe for a frustrating night. B -b -b bingo We're hoping to introduce a mechanic that adjusts your ratings, plural, uh, when you've been gone for a while to ease you back in when you return. Like, I planned on not dropping this game, but then footage gets lost, uh, it gets eaten by the computer, because I didn't delete it, don't know where it went. Uh, no, I did delete that one. Sorry, that was the Far Cry 6, uh, footage that, uh, the computer ate. I lost the Legion footage. Um, but, like, stuff, stuff like that happens, like, uh, Legion is stupidly, br uh, underpowered. <laughs> and, uh, like, the add-ons need a, a buff. They need a slight rework. They're not f great to play. So, like, do I really, <sighs> there's other things to play. There's just so much other things to play, and like I said, I was busy uh, doing stuff at the end of the year on the uh, main channel, the uh, channel update for what to look forward to in 2022, the the game of the year. I was getting some Let's Plays done. Just like I didn't have time, and there's other shit to play that's way better than DBD. So when I come back, when I start playing again, oh, I have to do the Huntress uh, uh, Adept Achievement Challenge. Yeah, that's not gonna be fun. It's gonna be all flashlight, clicky, clicky, circle of healing, circle jerks. And it's gonna be like, match after match after match is gonna be no K, five gens done within three minutes. That, to quote somebody who knows what they're talking about, is a frustrating night of recording. So, I'm excited for this, because let me pull back the curtain. This game, Dead by Daylight, is the most anxiety-filling game I've ever played. Like, I sit down to record, I'm like, man, what if I suck? What if I have a bad game? I don't want to post that, because having a bad game in, say, like, Halo Infinite or Call of Duty, it's like, oh, man, I went 12 and 15. Oh, man, I could have been a little bit better. I could have had better accuracy. I could have done this. This is like... Ugh. They opened the fucking gate within record time and sat there clicky clicky teabagging at the exit gates. Do I really want to play this game anymore? So... It just fills me with anxiety to sit down and like not play this game for a while and then record it again just on a whim. With no like... Warm ups or anything. Just like cold as ice. Just get in there. Like, I, I, I'm pretty sure I can re-download Black Ops Cold War after not playing it for a year and a half, jump on there, and just be confident in my ability to play it after not playing it for almost two years, and I could just record a video and nothing feels off. This game, everything feels off. Just... It, it's just, it just fills me with anxiety and dread of recording a video. Just how it is. So this, if they give me, if you give you something good, and they like, like maybe if you haven't played in a month, it drops your MR drastically down. All of this being said, you gotta start being transparent with your MMR. That's what it comes down to. Um, I tweeted out response to them wanting to make changes. Uh, you have to literally change back to what the system was before when it was metal based because that was kind of perfect <laughs> let's let's be honest here like survivors their only goal is to escape so they're gonna sit on gens and they're gonna rat around the map until the exit gates are open just to escape they're not gonna go for unhooks they're not gonna go for heals they're not gonna look to be chased by the killer they're just gonna look to escape same thing with killer like oh I my MMR go big when I kill four people well let me tunnel this one off at first hook and camp the first, the second hook, and let me do that for everybody else while they do gens in my face. You have a perfect system in line that tells you how how well you did in the match. It's your emblem system. Just award survivors for escaping the killer, winning, uh, doing gens, healing other players, unhooking other players, 
or killer, winning a chase. Uh, you have a system in place that lets you know when somebody different is hooked for the first time. You have it with barbecue and you have it with the new artist's perk. I forget which one. Award additional MMR if you hook four different survivors in your first four hooks. To kind of incentivize not tunneling and camping. Like give more MMR for getting nine to 12 hooks. It's so fucking simple. It's almost like you had it for four years and then you said, let's fuck it up. Unclear why. Let's move on. I'm talking for 15, 16 minutes here. Something else I'm excited about. Okay, future solo survivor experience. Uh, TLDR, they don't want to nerf uh, Swifts. They want to bring up solo players to that level, kind of. Excellent. All right. I'm going to commend you on this, depending on how it works out. Okay. Again, this is a lot of tell, don't show. Uh, thanks to skill-based matchmaking ratings, nobody have said that ever. Uh, we're able to see the impact playing with a pre-made group has on the outcome of a match at various skill levels. The data confirms our suspicions. Shit's fucked for solos. Uh, as skill goes up, so does the gap in survival rates between solo survivors and pre-made groups. In the top end of the skill levels, the difference in escape is as much as 15%. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that is actually a lot. That's not great. Uh-huh. Uh, Difference between solo survivors and groups make it difficult to find a perfect balance. If we balance killers around pre-made groups, solo survivors get left behind. Meanwhile, if we balance around solo survivors, killers have a rough time against groups. With that in mind, we're working on same some measures to bridge the gap between solo survivors and pre-made groups, which will allow us to better balance killers as a result. This is basically Scott's idea from like a while ago. And and it and if they follow his ideology, this game is gonna be shit for a little bit for killers, but in the long run, it's going to be great for both sides. His his thing was basically bring up solo queue. It's gonna be a shit show for for killers all around because we're solo now has a, an advantage. Swifts obviously have an advantage. Killers have nothing. But then behavior will start to see what killers need real work done. And then they can work on bringing them up to even levels with like nurse, blight, and huntress, and, and nurse. That's if they do it correctly. If they don't, this game dies. Um, we're basically uh, we're aiming to strike a balance between making the solo players plural feel like they're a part of the team without being overbearing. For example, we want to share key pieces of inf information like what are my teammates doing, but not too much info like showing everyone's exact location. I feel like that's a shot at VHS. Because VHS's HUD has the your your friends over here and says, Jim Bob is in laboratory. Kevin is in library, like stuff like that. So I feel like that's like a shot at that, but maybe. Um, to put it simply, the idea is to bring solo players up the same level, not giving exact not giving people excessive information that makes even pre-made groups stronger. That is the key. That is a very difficult place to balance. We want to share a very early peek at one potential way of closing this gap. Before we do, we want to stress this is in the very early stages. We're curious what you think, but please keep in mind that it may change or even be scrapped entirely. JK, we don't scrap anything ever. Look at the MMR system that we even confirmed failed on its face. One feature we're experimenting with is a status icon next to each survivor's portrait in the HUD that lets you know what they're doing. This way, solo survivors can base their decision around what their teammates are doing, and partial groups get a better idea of their solo teammates' contributions, making everyone feel like more of a team. This is something that can already be easily conveyed by a quick callout over voice chat, but is currently not available to solo survivors. Basically, you're going to have your teammates over here and go, ah, oh, Leroy, he's on a gen. I know he's on a gen. Kevin, he's over here. He's working on uh, a totem. Okay, he found a totem. Maybe he's blessing it with a, a boon, or maybe he's working on getting ruin out of here. James, well, he's just jerking off in a corner because he's not doing anything right now. Excellent. So I know I can do a gen, or I could do whatever, basically. Or, uh, Leroy's hooked, and I see 
Kevin is working on a gen. Uh, James is the name I gave this imaginary friend of mine. <laughs> Uh, James is touching a totem. I can go, well, fuck off. I'll get off of my thing. Or I'm working on Jen. Let's say I'm working on Jen and I see uh, uh, Kevin. His icon goes from generator to nothing. There's nothing there. I go, okay. He got off his Jen and he's probably going to go get the unhook. And then I see Leroy gets unhooked. I go, ah, okay. I can stay on my Jen. That's why I run, uh, uh-oh, uh-oh, that one perk, that one perk, uh, where you can see the killer's aura if they're around the hook after, a, uh, after they hook somebody. I don't, uh, I don't remember what that perk's called, but I run that perk because it's good info for solo players. If this is basically that, but not as good, I'll probably stop running that. And that frees me up to use something off meta like I always do because fuck the meta. And once again, this is a very early preview, so early that we're still discussing this internally. Feel free to share your thoughts, but please keep in mind that none of this is final or confirmed, depending on how things go. This feature may be changed or scrapped entirely before it even sees the light of day. We wanted to be open about this and keep you in the loop. The gap between solo survivors and groups is not under, not going under the radar. It's something we're actually worked, we're actively working on. Thumbs up. A plus. This is a huge thing. This is a very big thing. It's a very fucking big thing. So, because again, if they bring up solo players and they see solo players are having the same success as groups, well, then they go, all right, well, clowns fucking dog shit. Oh my God, who knew that? Everybody. Let's bring him up. Let's bring Doctor up to the same level as high, uh, higher ranked killers. That's ideally what they would do. We'll find out. Uh, they. This, this is one feature they're working on. They may have been working on several. Because they even say at uh, one potential way. Maybe they have the HUD thing and maybe they have something else. Maybe a ping system. Maybe something else. I don't know. Something that doesn't break the game for Swifts. Same thing they said. Um, also, uh, the way things go, you should maybe scrap time before it sees the light of day. Hey, motherfuckers, you're now adding a beta tab for everyone to opt in on experimental shit that you're working on. Literally. Sometimes we think of experimental features that we'd love some feedback and data on, but we aren't quite ready to release it into the wild. This is what this is for. Like, next time you head into the settings menu, you'll see a new betas tab. Here, you'll find betas for upcoming features that you can opt in or out of as you please. We uh, want to share your thoughts on something early on. Awesome. Opt in. Yeah, I see on the cake, you'll be rewarded with extra blood points for the uh, for the first bunch of matches you play with the beta activated. Unlike the player uh, PTB, these betas are also available on console. Everyone's invited. So the question is, what's the beta? What's the first beta going to be? That leads into the wiggle update. They're now. This is it. This is it. Look at it. Look. Uh oh, there it is. How do I escape? Uh oh. Uh oh. Control. No. Uh oh. Uh oh. The magic of editing. Um, that's it though. Basically. Uh, we changed struggling from button mashes to skill checks. Uh, make it much more uh, accessible and a lot easier on your buttons and keys. Doing the same with wiggling. Hit the skill checks, you wiggle meter go big. Miss them. They don't, I'm assuming. Uh, that's the first thing in beta. And then they got toggle interactions. Okay, uh, new option settings. Uh, I don't understand. Like to go with it, you also find a new option to cancel inter interactions by sprinting. Okay, um, I don't know what this really means. Uh, oh, PTB is Wednesday, so the day this goes up, PTB. So I'll be uh, dated information. Uh, yeah. Uh, our goal is uh, more accessible and to provide an alternative for players that don't wish to hold the button for the entire length of the interaction. Plus, this frees up your, a hand so you can have it take a drink while hitting skill checks. We'll still predict when you're taking a drink. Yeah, yeah, you can. You guys have it down to a fucking to, uh, fucking millisecond of when I'm like, I should get off this gen to go look around a. Well, fuck. 
every single time without fail. I'll get off a generator and it'll like immediately explode because it'll proc a skill check about two milliseconds before I'm like I let go of the button. As I'm letting go of the button, skill check. I hear the bung, fuck, immediately. Um, this has been a rather long discussion. I was hoping to make this like maybe five, ten minutes. It's twenty-five now. Cool. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. To check out the part two, and by tomorrow I mean now we get into the fun stuff. Hopefully I edit that good, and it's not just like, hopefully it matches up perfectly this is when I say like right. Now we're getting to, hopefully it's not bad and cringy. Uh, anyway, part two, January 2022, got a lot of twos in that one. Uh, dev update. I talked a lot in that first part because there's a lot to talk about and like, Hey, why d show don't tell don't tell don't show that makes not no sense that makes not no sense Uh, <laughs> uh it's not even midnight right now. I'm recording this at like 730 um, There's not a lot to talk in this one like there's like some add-on things There's one big thing I want to talk about But hopefully it's not gonna be another 20 minute rant. Um They're removing Leatherface's masks uh, because no, humanity is fucking stupid. Um, not behavior in this one. Uh, those of you who may not know, Cannibal can unlock faces for the original of the original four survivors by sacrificing them 25 times. I don't have them unlocked because I didn't play enough Bubba games, and 25 times? Good luck seeing a Dwight in the wild 25 times, let alone sacrificing them 25 times. Um, they say... Uh, members of the community uh, have ex uh, shared their experiences with people targeting and harassing them while using these masks. These reports were disheartening to hear. We absolutely condemn this behavior. We are not comfortable having these masks in the game when they are used as a tool to spread hate. To that end, we will be removing the cannibal's unlockable faces in this upcoming mid-chapter. Um, I, I thought that was a neat idea just because, oh, that matches who who Leatherface is, like, he wears faces of other people. But then racist shitbags who probably wear red hats with certain or letters on it, um, are, we can't have nice things because of dipshit racists. Like, they ruin everything they touch, and they have no place in any community at all. Fuck racists, fuck bigots, uh, fuck transphobes, fuck turfs, fuck an anybody who's anti other people, no matter what. Fuck them all. There, that's my sentiment on it. I'm a friend to all. <laughs> like, if it doesn't matter who you are, what you align with, uh, who you're attracted to, you're welcome on this channel. At all times, no matter what. If you are opposed to that sentiment, hey, the door's right over there. Get fucked, okay? Uh, so, we can't have nice things. This was a neat little thing that Bubba had, and again, racists just ruined it because they would wear... Listen, it's blackface. Absolutely, is it's, it's the Claudette one. We know what they're talking about. It's the Claudette one. Like, oh, Bubba wearing blackface, and then, you know, they get into endgame chat, and they say some horrible, despicable shit. Because they've never been punched in the mouth. Seriously, that's their problem. They need a somebody to punch them in the face. I have your remedy. We're good to go. Uh, but because of that, they're being removed. Nothing you can really do about it. Uh, anyways, anyone who has ever played the cannibal in your lifetime, uh, will be rewarded 6,000 iridescent shards to compensate for their removal. You really don't need to do that, like, but that's fine, I guess. Like, you could have been like, here's a hundred thousand blood points, here's a couple hundred, uh, uh, auric cells, the iridescent shards are nice. It's honestly not your fault behavior that you have to remove this. It's not. It's dipshit racists. Uh, we will not tolerate any hateful activity and, the, and will continue to take every step necessary to protect the community. Good on you. I stand with you. Behavior. 
Um, rank, uh, grade, sorry, not rank, grades. Uh, grade rewards revisited a few months back. Uh, we did stupid shit. The current reward range up to half a quarter of a million blood points. We've been tracking grade resets in the past months. Uh, to see not only how far everyone manages to get in a month, but also how many matches it took to get there. The current reward for your efforts doesn't seem very fitting, so we're increasing the grade starting with January 13th. I haven't played the fucking game enough to actually rank up, and honestly, it's, it's for somebody who doesn't play all the time, it's very difficult to rank up, even to get out of Ash, Ash 4. I think the highest I got was maybe Bronze 4. That was about it. I don't, like, I don't know. The, uh, the grades thing, when, when every grade from Ash 4 to Iridescent 1 has the same requirements of getting a, uh, Merciless Killer or whatever the hell it is on the Survivor side, I don't even remember anymore. You got a problem. You got a real big problem. Like, make it easier to get out of Ash and Bronze and then start having the ramp up at 4, at, um, Silver. Oops. I described, um, the old rank system twice in this video now. It was once when they were talking about how MMR works, and now with the grades. Just fuck, just fucking fix it. Just fucking fix it. Uh, go back. Go back to the past, Samurai Jack. Come on. Uh, we're in the process of finally finalizing the exact rewards. Again, this is a tell, don't show, and they're not even telling us anything. Woo! Add on updates. I'm. I'm, I don't know. I see people saying these are nerfs. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Carburetor Tuning God reduced movement speed penalty to 2%. It was 4%. That sounds like a buff to me. Is they're reducing the movement penalties to 2% that were 4%. They sound like they're going to be better. Uh, Iridus of Flesh lowered the maximum tantrum duration to 5 seconds max to, from what was 8. That sounds like a win. Increase the time before tantrum by t uh, 2 seconds was 1 second. It all sound like wins. That's like a lot of these. Uh, some of them are like the man's letter reduces available bear traps by two. It was three. That's taking one away. Increase the time to charge ambush attacks by 33%. It was 66%. So that's a nerf. Some of these are nerfs. Uh, Redhead's pinky finger. They've made it iridescent hat. The iridescent head. Okay, kind of, it's, mm, I don't know about that, but here we are. Uh, I'm not going to go through these just because, eh, just, it's just eh, I think. Like, there's a lot of, like, increases victim movement speed by 0.3 milliseconds, uh, meters per second. I see MS and I'm like, milliseconds. The meters per second was 0.4. Is that going to be a big difference? I don't know. It's like, I got to get into game and actually play with these. whoopie de doo Perk updates. Um, this is, the, this is the big one, and so is another one, Power Struggle. Uh, because these kind of go hand in hand with the new wiggle mechanic. And the, this tells me it's going to be a lot harder to wiggle free. That's what, it, that's what these tell me. The effects of wiggling have been increased to a, up to 100%. The aura blocking range for nearby hooks has been increased to a nice round 16 meters. Fucking remove that. Do you really need to give the killer more of a disadvantage on maps like, oh say, uh, the game where it's hard hard enough to find a hook? Do you really need to do that? Uh, additionally, now boil hover has a new effect and it's fucking stupid. If the killer drops from a height while carrying you, you instantly get a 25% wiggle progress bonus. I say these are fucking stupid because they are, uh, but this really tells me that it's going to be harder to wiggle free with the new mechanic because now you have to hit skill checks and skill checks happen, what, every two seconds maybe? So I don't know if that's really a stealth buff to killers because if I pick you up and I take you to a hook, you have, I think, 20 seconds to wiggle free as of right now. How long do I get to carry you for with the new Wiggle update? That's the question. Uh, when this goes up, the PTB will be out. I guess we'll have better information. I'm not going to really look for the information, but we'll have it, I guess. I'm, I'm just curious to see how this works. The same thing with um, Power Struggle. Uh, this one released with pretty safe values, so it won't get out of hand. Now we're comfortable with reducing the activation conditions. 
Power struggle now activate once 15% uh, wiggle progress has been reached. This should make it a little easier to pull off some uh, with some planning. I don't power struggle. Is that the pallet one? Yeah, I think that's Elodie's pallet one. Uh, but again, this is telling me now we're comfortable reducing the activation conditions and reducing it to 15%. That means you might not be able to reach that so easily if they're like willing to be like, you gotta just hit like 15%. That's all you gotta hit. So maybe this wiggle thing is a stealth buff to killers. Probably not, but we got some other st things to talk about. Boil over is the biggest one though, because that may be hinting at what it, what the wiggle feature now is. Which if it works like that, thumbs up. Everybody's gonna be running boil over. <laughs> Yay! It's a good thing I aim uh, when I pick up a survivor. I walk towards the hook, and I'm steering with the look stick. I'm not uh, strafing left or right to correct my path. That makes it much easier for me. I don't know about everybody else. Distortion still fucking sucks, but we gave it an extra token. Whee! Uh, Remember Me has a lot of potential, with, but with a basic ba uh, basic attack condition, it could make it an unpopular choice with some killers. Almost all of them have a special attack that does damage. So it's gone. Remember Me will now get a token whenever the obsession loses a health state. Um, I think we're going to see a common trend with this, where we're just going to take basic attack conditions away from everything that has them. Because... I think we're seeing a lot of special attack killers now, but also this now works really well with Legion. Please just rework Legion and buff Legion. Don't give them stealth shadow buffs like this. That mean nothing to everybody else, please. Uh, wake up. On that note, it seems only fitting to revisit wake up. We've increased the gate opening speed bonus up to 25%. This should make the perk more impactful when it comes into play and offer some counterplay in the event that Remember Me catches on. They don't even know if people are gonna wanna run Remember Me, cause it's so dog shit still. But they're like, we need a counter for it. So if Remember Me tanks, Wake Up is now broken. Cause you're, op you're opening the gate in less time. What? And this is kind of a circular thing, right? Killer's gonna be like, everyone's gonna run wake up because that's too good. So I gotta run remember me. And survivor's gonna be like, I have to one run wake up because they're gonna run remember me. It's a vicious circle here. Stop. Also, that whole thing, like, reactionary. What if the new wiggle mechanic fails and nobody likes it and they're like, alright, fine, we'll take it out? Do you nerf boil over and power struggle into the ground again? Or are you just like, nah, suck it, killers. Fuck you. Good question. Uh, Gearhead, uh, this is another one, like, Remember Me, where, like, it, it's no longer a basic attack, it's just any attack that causes them to lose health. Uh, they did give it a small rework, I don't know what it does now, what it did, uh, when the survivor loses a health state. Next time a survivor hits a great skill check when repairing, the aura will be revealed for 10 seconds. And then it activates, it deactivates. Woo! Uh, buckle up. Aura reading duration has been increased. I don't know, nobody uses it. Being a perks nobody uses, Coop the Grace. Uh, we're bumping the lunge increase up to 80% and shorten the gap between different tiers of the perk. Woo! Nobody's gonna use it. That's garbage. Bird of Chase is interesting to me because now they've made it like every other obsession token perk where if the obsession dies, you don't lose your tokens. That's it. They're even like, it has found its way in some, some niche builds. No, it hasn't. And it can be fun to experiment with. No, it isn't. However, losing all your tokens when the obsession is killed leaves you with a perk without a perk for the rest of the match. Yep. Getting rid of that restriction, no longer lose tokens if the obsession dies. That's neat. I don't know if it'll be useful, but it's neat, I guess. And Dead Man Switch. Uh, it's no longer an obsession perk. So there's that. Dead Man Sp Switch will activate whenever uh, any survivor is hooked. Uh, cool. Very little killers are going to be able to use it just because you have to chase somebody off of a gen to lock it down. And there's like a handful of killers that can do that in this game because of their mobility abilities. Uh, and then there's only a couple that can do it without mobility. Doctor's one of them. That's about it. Uh,. It's a, it's an okay patch, I guess. The big thing is watching the wiggle meter now, how, how good or bad that will be. Uh, 
I don't know. I just I really don't care about most of the shit in this. It's like the the future stuff from from part one that I'm really interested in. Like matchmaking, how we're fixing that. Uh, solo survivor experience, how we're fixing that. That's about it. It's the wiggle meter, uh, the wiggleometer. How that how that works in this one. So I don't know. I'm just I'm just kind of mad at this point with this game. They're not really doing anything that the community wants fixed. They're just doing their own thing again. Eh, whatever. Um, I thought I was gonna say something, and I kind of just completely forgot about it. That's fun. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, all this hinges on the thing that's coming in the future update. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the solo queue thing, like, if they see that they buff solo survivors to match uh, Swifts. And they can see what killers have a rough time against everyone. Uh, they better balance killers as a result of that. But hopefully they do that. Hopefully they make solo survivor experience way more enjoyable and more tolerable. And and then see what killers suck and buff them. That'd be nice. Uh, that's it. I think it's gonna be like a half hour video. God damn. I was hoping for a short one. Uh, I don't know when gameplay's coming back. Again, I'm kind of like burnt out right now. So... Uh, for now, I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, hook that like button, more the subscribe button, bing bong that bell. And until the next video, whenever the hell that is, uh, I'll see you in the fog. Good luck!